electorate of Christchurch East. Leave us all for that purpose. Is there anyone opposed to that course of action? It appears not. Leave this part to the call goes to yeah. Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There's a speech that focused on the burning issues of the day, isn't it? The colours of Sarah. Goodness me. But in this debate, I just want to talk about the issue of um, fiscal policy in general and, and uh, the fairness of our tax system. Because I find myself in the unusual position of reflecting back on Budget 2010. And the reason for that is the many references made in this House to the cost of tax cuts for those in the upper income bracket, and in particular from Dr Norman, who has gone on ad nauseum over the last month about his belief that the National Government's uh, tax cuts in 2010, far from being fiscally neutral, actually cost, uh, quote, $2 billion and counting. Now, I've got no ability to say whether or not that figure is correct, but whether or not it is, um, is certainly not the full story. In fact, it seems that Dr Norman may have been taking some policy advice from former member Stuart Nash. Remember Mr Nash in this House last year talking about farming incomes? That's right, remember? And he talked about gross incomes. Never mind that that's not what one pays tax on. One pays tax on net incomes. Well, Dr Norman is telling half a story really, really well. Because whether or not the cost of the tax cuts to the upper income earners was $2 billion, that was just one element of about 13 or more separate levers to fiscal policy that this government has made, including increases to uh, GST that has resulted in upper income earners paying much, much more of that tax, the removal of depreciation on residential and commercial rentals, and the closure of a number of loopholes uh, which were unintended consequences that benefited um, upper income earners in tax transfers, like working for families, student allowances and child support. Uh, and those loopholes were actually introduced by Labor and supported by the Greens. Uh, but the biggest one, the biggest one of all, was that the trust top tax rate and the top personal rate was so wide. And I remember the uh, tax working group actually said that in the past we had one of the least distortionary tax systems in the OECD, and then we went from that uh, to one of the most distortionary under Labor. So while there was a reduction in the top personal tax rate in 2010 to remove that distortion, it is completely uh, incorrect to say that that had a cost of $2 billion. And I much prefer to refer to the more independent and non-partisan commentaries of uh, the accounting firm of Deloitte, who in their 2011 budget report confirmed that the 2010 tax switch was, quote, indeed fiscally neutral according to the tax ban. And as far as I'm concerned, that argument was over more than a year ago. And Dr Norman can go on and on and on all he likes, but that does not make it any more true. Indeed, Mr Speaker, those uh, changes that we made meant that three quarters of New Zealanders pay a top personal marginal tax rate of 17.5%. Half of all households pay no net tax at all. And 17% 17% of households pay 97% of the net income tax burden in this country. But Labor and the Greens say 97% is not enough. They would want to put that top tax back and punish hard-working New Zealanders even oh, more. Here it comes. Here it comes. And we know what they would do with those tax increases, because the cuts actually gave New Zealanders a choice. And those cuts came across the board. They had a choice to either spend it or save it or reduce debt with it. And we now know what they did with it. They saved it and they reduced debt with it. Because our savings rate is going up and our private debt is going down. But Labour and the Greens don't think that the public should have a right to decide what to do with their money, Mr Speaker. They think they know better than the public how the public should spend their money. And so they went to the electorate last year and they said, we're going to take those cuts back off you. We're going to take that tax cut back off you because we know better how to spend it. No, we well, I think, Mr Speaker, the electorate spoke very clearly about what it thought about that policy. You make it, up. it spoke then and it spoke now. I'd like to know what that member thinks I'm making up because absolutely every one of these things has been verified and the people around him aren't making any noises about it because they know what the, the truth of it is. They know what the positive impact of those tax cuts and fiscal prudence was, Mr Speaker. 
And that's what the electorate knew too, because this government doesn't treat the electorate like idiots. We can go to the electorate with tough decisions, like partial floats, like the mixed ownership model. Yes, like class sizes. Yep, tell us That's right. Class and OK, maybe there is another discussion still to be had, oh, but at least we're listening. Oh, oh, oh. At least we're that. listening. Here, and that's a damn sight more than the public is doing to the policies. Who knows what those policies are? Because there is no alternative being thrown up, except tax, borrow and spend, Mr Speaker. And I think the public has spoken very clearly about that. Was it a mistake? Jackie Dean. very dear is to feel safe in their homes. It is one of those things that